Good Saturday morning. It's time for the uh, Experts Program and with uh, our tech expert, Luis Alvarez, standing by. We've got a great topic to share with you today on Power Talk Radio. Luis, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Mark. How are you feeling, my friend? I'm I'm feeling better. Thank you very much. I uh, had a little bit of a cold uh, previous weekend that hung on for a bit, but I'm a lot better now. So thank you. Big story. I heard something about this on the news earlier this week, and we've got more details of it fleshing out that we're going to talk about here. But there was a massive cyber cyber attack that was stopped by a Microsoft engineer who just realized something wasn't right. You know, he was working on a program and uh, apparently he noticed that um, something in the program was using far more processing power than it was designed to do. And that kind of got his spidey senses going and he delved into it and he found something that uh, could have been crippling. Tell us what exactly happened here. Yeah. So, you know, we talk a lot about how people are number one cause of cyber attacks. You know, they click the wrong thing or access a website they shouldn't. And so we talk a lot about how people cause problems, but this is one of those few instances where a human being, a person, a programmer who just happened to be, like you said, on alert, his spider senses tingled and said, okay, there's something going on here, prevented what could have been a catastrophic cyber attack by just noticing that the behavior of a certain piece of software seemed off somehow. And the more he dug into it, the more he realized that, hey, there was something seriously wrong with this. And so what happens is that there's, when programmers write programs, rather than have to code every stinking little piece of it from scratch, they sometimes use pre-compiled modules that make it easier for them to just cobble on a certain feature. Like let's say you want to, for example, you when a button gets pushed, a certain light to light up on the screen. Well, somebody may have already written the code for that. So rather than you writing that whole section of code by hand, you just get this module, which are available under open source licensing, which means that they're free to use as long as you use them under certain parameters. And then you add it to your application and off you go. And most programs and most operating systems use these open source software programs or modules very actively. And this open source community, these are volunteer folks who monitor these modules are very, very diligent about preventing any sort of malfeasance. However, in this case, what happened was that this open source software program called XZUtils was deliberately sabotaged by a developer to create a backdoor that would allow access to millions of servers using the uh, Linux operating system, which is the number one, you know, we, we think of Windows and Mac OS, but really in the, in the business community, Linux is what runs the internet. And this uh, potentially could have caused a devastating cyber attack had this backdoor been able to be exploited. Wow. And crazy thing about it is that, that they don't know if the person who engineered this hack, Mm -hmm. if it's an individual or if it's a group of people using a, uh, like a made up name because the individual, they haven't been able to uh, contact this person. Yeah. So as it turns out, the way that these modules are maintained is that, you know, you have senior engineers who have earned the reputation and, you know, have a, a good standing in the community. And they're kind of the final arbiters of anything that's added or removed to these modules. And the author of this particular module had started to allow somebody else to help with them. A developer supposedly named Gio Tan, which now, as you pointed out, is suspected not to be an individual as much as a collection of nation state actors, somebody from Korea or China potentially, or even Russia that had essentially earned the trust of the uh, original author of uh, XZ Tools to the point where he was allowing this Gio Tan to start deciding what was allowed and wasn't allowed. And that Gia Tan person or persons was able to introduce this back door without anybody knowing it because essentially she was the one or he was the one that was approving it. And once they, uh, you know, once they detected this back door and were able to trace it to this developer named Gia Tan, suddenly that developer is gone. You know, no sign of that person is available online anywhere. So that really drives home the point that this could be a group of people and that it could be something that is a project of, uh, of a foreign government government and not necessarily a friendly government. Yeah, it really is something that took, this happened over several months and years where, the, you know, this uh, this Gia Tan role was able to gain the trust of all of the rest of the community that was working on this module. So obviously this was like a long-term play, which is more indicative of a nation-state actor than a hacker that's just trying to have fun, you know, tends to be much more spontaneous and, and easily discovered. So had it not been 
for this uh, developer from Microsoft, uh, you know, kind of a, an unassuming programmer who really does not want the, the notoriety. His name is Andres Freund, but he's asked, you know, to kind of stay off the radar. He's declined interviews and he's been very humble in terms of, uh, you know, not wanting to take credit for having discovered something that could have been devastating. But even the CEO of uh, Microsoft, Satya Nadella, has been effusive, but in, in a good way, uh, congratulating Freund for having the foresight and the perseverance and the, you know, just the, the sense of something was off to be able to prevent something that could have been devastating, not just to Microsoft, but across the entire globe, because his back door would have given access to millions of computers on the internet. And I think the other thing to be, um, that kind of drives us home, what's so interesting and so different about a lot of the way this community functions is, for example, you would say, well, how could this person get a job without attending a job interview? Well, yes, yeah. they do things differently in this realm of employment. There wouldn't necessarily ever be a physical meeting between, say, the people that develop this software and hiring someone to work on it. The guy is just exactly. able yeah. to get in there and be interviewed. I don't know, you know, maybe a series of questions are answered to find out if the person has the bona fides to really understand what they're talking about. And then they get approved and uh, they become part of a team. But, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the practicality of telling everybody that's going to work on this project, well, you all need to get on an airplane and fly here and we're going to sit in a room and have an interview. Unfortunately, you know, from a security standpoint, it doesn't work that way. So we can never really know who this individual is. And I guess they didn't even conduct a Zoom interview, video interview with this person to check them out. It, it must have all been done through emails or, or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, through Slack, through some of these other collaborative tools that are out there where people just meet online and never actually see each other or talk to each other. It's all, you know, just uh, communications either via text or chat or emails. And, you know, you develop the trust and you develop, you earn this trust over time and, you know, demonstrate that you're you're a good egg in a way. But that also has some uh, shortcomings that now the open source community really needs to be cognizant of, that they need to police themselves a little bit more. And businesses in general need to be aware of the uh, vulnerabilities that are potentially out there based on open source uh, applications. All right. That's Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, joining us today. Online, it's AlvarezTG.com, at AlvarezTG. That is the Twitter handle. And Luis, the toll-free number for the iTeam. Give us a call at 866-78-ITEAM. That's 866-784-8326. And then looking ahead to Monday, we have a really interesting program starting at 830. We're going to be talking about something new coming to your iPhone. Uh, give us a sneak preview, Luis. Yep. For those of you that uh, have always wondered what it would be like to have somebody else uh, sound like you while you type in a personal voice coming to app iPads or iPhones soon may be the answer. So tune in on Monday to learn more. All right. Join us then. Lewis, thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. We'll chat again next week. Take care, my friend.